Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm glad so many of you could make it out tonight. Um, obviously, we're here to talk about early childhood education. It's something that's getting a lot of attention. And for those of us in the industry, we're like, yay, finally. Um, we realize just how important it is. Uh, we see it every day. We know what kind of a presence we have not only in these children's lives, but in the lives of these families. So it is a very important role that these educators play within these facilities and in these educational houses. Now we all might have a different idea or pedagogy that we apply to these systems and how we are handling these families and these children, but we all believe in the importance of this time frame. And we know the value of building a solid foundation. They're building their brains, they're building their neural pathways. There is no more important time. And you see lots of programs within the community in the older grades for leadership and these soft skill sets that we're already building in these children from birth to six years of age. So we see everyone getting on the bus, but it's a little late. So we'd like everyone to follow along with us and, and get on this a bit sooner. Those who are driving that bus, the early childhood educators, are the vital piece to this puzzle. And even though early childhood education is getting a lot of attention, what doesn't seem to be getting the attention is the actual people in the rooms, the ones making it possible. We talk about funding. We talk about funding schools. We talk about funding programs. We talk about funding materials. Nobody talks about funding the major driver in the room. Now, I started in education the summer of 1993. I won't tell you what I made. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you how old I am. But I started back then, and I kept my gaze on education, despite the fact that everyone said, you're never going to make any money. I'd like to say those people were wrong. <laughs> but after going to university, studying elementary education, special education, going back and getting Montessori certification, I didn't see $30,000. Now, think about what a livable wage is. If you break it down and you put an early childhood educator on that graph, we're not making it. These people who are so vital, who are so important to early childhood education, to building the future generation, to having the responsibility of actually becoming a part of your families, can't pay their bills. And that's not OK. We talk about funding. We have all these wonderful ideas. And we're ignoring the most important people in the room. I know my teachers here, they work really hard. These poor women ran home to take a very quick shower before you guys came. Um, and that was everything from engineering environments, planning curriculums, but also cleaning, lifting, moving. They do it all. And they do it all with a smile on their face because they have a passion for what they do. And that passion needs to be rewarded. We need to get creative. Now, I'm not blaming school owners. I'm not blaming districts. Let's face it, funding is a major challenge. We all know that. We have to have buildings, supplies, insurance, materials, marketing, you name it. There's so many places that the money goes. And there just isn't a lot out there. And all I'm asking is that all of us in the room believe in the same thing. So we need to get creative together to figure out how to resolve this problem. Now we know we can't put it on the parents. They're already strapped. Let's be honest. It costs a lot to raise a family. And they're paying exorbitant amounts for childcare, taxes, and just the everyday taking care. So we know we can't pass the cost along to them. We understand that. We can't make it come from, it, from nowhere. We, we, we can't raise taxes anymore. 
we have to be creative. So how do we do that? Well, let's let teachers monetize on what they're already doing. They give parent ed nights. They're already expected to give parent ed nights. We want to get the public involved. We want to, we want to be activists. We want to be champions for early childhood education. Well, what better way than to let your early childhood experts have a parent education night that they then open to the public, become an activist for early childhood education, maybe let them take home a little extra money for it. What is it going to hurt to utilize different types of marketing strategies and open the doors to your schools to the public and invite everyone in, not just your parents? Because where you're going to get your activism and your funding isn't just from the community you're dealing with. It's from the public at large. We've got to get everybody's attention. We've already sold early childhood education to everyone in this room. You wouldn't be here if you didn't believe in early childhood education. You wouldn't be here if you didn't believe in the teachers who are in this room. You wouldn't be here if you didn't know the importance. What I'm saying is there's a lot of people out there who aren't here. We need to get their attention and we need to do it together. Not just Head Start, public school programs, universal pre-K, Montessori. You have all these different methodologies. We're all fighting for the same thing. The importance of this education of birth to six years of age. And we've been so siloed. And we're all trying to champion for those same things. We need to get in the room together like we are tonight. We need to talk to one another. We need to brainstorm together. We all know Jeff Bezos threw the gauntlet down. And he's like, oh, I have all this funding. I have all this money. Everyone's like, oh, I have this great idea. I have this great idea. Everyone's looking. Everyone's you know, a little salivating, let's face it. But maybe those of us who are boots on the ground need to be like, OK, that's wonderful. We're really excited about that. We don't really need any more schools. We don't really need any more facilities. We need to get the facilities that we have already functioning, working even better. Maybe that's a 401k plan for early childhood educators. Maybe it's a healthcare option. Maybe it's benefits. Maybe it's scholarship funding. Because as we're raising the bar for early childhood education and its expectations, we're also raising the bar for what we want out of these professionals. In order for them to be a lead in the classroom, they have to have a degree. They have to have a background in child development. They have to have special certifications. They need to be CPR and first aid trained. They need all of these things behind them just to qualify for a license to function within the classroom. And every school and every center and every facility is expected to have these licensed individuals employed in their classroom. Now turn around and take one of these licensed, specially trained people, sit them down, and now tell them the wage. Doesn't always fly. And you've got a lot of people who are very passionate about children, who want to work in the industry, but they can't afford to go to the training that would actually qualify them and make them eligible to be a lead in the classroom. It's a catch-22. So what do we do? We have to find ways to help these passionate, professional people to obtain the licensing that they need and also to thrive in the industry and gravitate more teachers to this early education realm. We don't want them running from us. We don't want them saying K through 12 pays better. And let's face it, K through 12 has their, have their own issues with, with, with what goes on there as well. Education is not a place to make a lot of money, but I think you should be able to make a living. I think we do need to show them that they're valued because we all agree it's important work. And if it's important work, we need to place some value. We need to show them that it is important. And I'm not saying there's a magic bullet to resolve the issue. 
Every school and every facility has its own challenges. We know that. All I'm asking is that if we get in a room together and we brainstorm and we share our philosophies and our applications and what we're trying, then maybe we could come up with some resolutions. Maybe if we stopped competing so much with each other and we all actually sat down around the table and shared things about pedagogy, practical application, business sense, marketing, we might actually get somewhere in early childhood education. We might actually have programs in every community that are effective, with staff that's happy, environments that are rich in curriculums that are feeding young children's minds. And there's no one in this room that would argue that that's a bad thing. So I think we need to really focus on what the topic is tonight, which is the inception of the educational journey. It starts at the beginning. And we need to re-emphasize that in every aspect, not just the buildings, not just the curriculum, not just the packages, but the actual people that are inside giving these schools and facilities a heartbeat. I thank you for your time and I'm very glad that you all came out.